Environment Minister Tanya Plibersek will push to extend the Murray-Darling Basin plan past the 2024 deadline to fulfil its election commitment, which will see 450 gigalitres of water fed back into the basin system. She says she's concerned Labor is significantly behind on the commitment to complete the project on time and has sought advice from the Murray-Darling Basin Authority Chair, Angus Houston, on how best to navigate an extremely difficult deadline. Green Senator and Environment Spokeswoman Sarah Hanson-Young has criticised Labor's economic or environmental credentials after it recently approved three coal mines as well. Joining me live for reaction on this, Nationals MP Keith Pitt, who of course, once upon a time, was the Water Minister. Thank you for your time. What, what have you made of this story today? Oh, Tom, great to be with you. Minister, formerly known as, no as I think is how it starts, mate. Uh, but I, I think for, for your viewers, 2,100 gigalitres has already been recovered. Now, that's 2,100 at times 1,000 megalitres, uh, which is a million litres. It's an awful lot of water that's already been taken out of the system that has a direct impact on those economies. It's got a direct impact on the availability uh, to build your business, to take risks, to grow more food. Uh, and the idea now that we've seen uh, Minister Plibersek revert back to buybacks, which are incredibly damaging on those communities, well, I just think that's the wrong approach. Well, the report into the scheme that Labor did once it came into office showed that of how much was supposed to be returned to the environment, environmental flows, 450 gigalitres, 2.5 gigalitres have been done. This was a mess they inherited, isn't it? Oh, well, she's been a little bit cute with the figures, Tom. So when we shifted away from buybacks and went into infrastructure spend, uh, effectively we put forward the opportunity for states in particular and other organisations to put up their projects. Projects will improve efficiencies without those damaging buybacks. And you are building infrastructure for uh, the taxpayer's dollar. Uh, what you get in terms of efficiencies and water recovery are just an added on benefit of that. Uh, that is the right approach. Now the numbers on that varied between, from memory, now close on 200 gigalitres that could come through that approach uh, to 150. It shifts around depending on the projects and the assessment. But they are real, they are scientifically assessed, they are out there. Some of them are still moving forward. And in my view that is still the right way to deal with this issue. You can't continue to damage those regional economies by taking mm. away what is their lifeblood, and that is the water supply. But that, isn't that what the delay aims to do, to really to give a bit more time to see what efficiencies can be found before the last resort of buybacks happens? I mean, this is what Labor's doing, isn't it? Oh, well, I've seen the release from the National Irrigators Council, and they've put forward their, their views. Uh, it is a big, complex system, Tom, from Queensland all the way to South Australia. But what I can guarantee is that the 450 gigalitres will not keep the Murray mouth open. Uh, you only have to look at what happened with nature, uh, with the amount of water that's fl flooded through there uh, in recent months in the past year. Uh, it took an enormous amount of water to stop dredging in the Murray mouth. Uh, we've got to be scientific about how we approach this. Uh, and I still think complementary measures uh, and, of course, building infrastructure with efficiencies is the right approach. I mean, what, what is the point of putting more fish at one end uh, and simply down the, down the river a couple of k, you've got an enormous amount of pumps which still don't have any fish protection on them. Uh, I mean, we've just got to be more sensible about this. The best people to talk to it about it are the local farmers and the producers. They've lived this for a very long period of time. They're well, the they're self-interested, the though. The, the point is the health of the entire river system. If, if you talk to them, you know, with the greatest respect, I'm sure they're working hard, what they want is water allocations to make money for what they're doing. Well, it's no surprise. <laughs> That's how they employ people and pay the mortgage and keep a roof over their head. Uh, yeah. and, and I don't think any other Australian would be any different. It is about striking the right balance. Uh, and in my view, the Coalition's policies were the right balance between absolutely damaging buybacks and the ability to build infrastructure, which lasts for decades. Uh, keep in mind that these efficiency measures, uh, particularly with uh, the big irrigators uh, and the big suppliers, make an enormous difference in the way that it's run, how many people are needed, how much is lost through seepage, for example, or evaporation. It, it is the right approach. Uh, the idea that you can destroy these communities uh, simply because you think there's some environmental benefit, which may or may not uh, come to the fore, uh, is just the wrong way to do this. It, it is a complex issue. Right. Well, it does take a lot of detail and a lot of consultation.